This is Titans Game Day, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, good morning, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Titans Game Day. With the voice of the Tennessee Titans, Mike Keith and Coach Dave McGinnis, I am Chris Harris. We are back here at Nissan Stadium this morning as the Titans take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And make no mistake about it, this is a very important game for the Tennessee Titans season. Win today, and there's a chance they can shore up the division title next weekend if the Vikings beat the Colts. A win would also stop a two-game losing skid for this Titans team who is banged up again with all sorts of injuries to key players. The Titans have not lost to the Jaguars since 2019. We're going to get to the specific match up in a second but first I mean we got to mention the biggest news of the week Titans owner Amy Adams Strunk firing general manager John Robinson after nearly seven years on the job Miss Amy said that she believes there is more to be done and higher aspirations to be met once the initial shock was over there of course is still a game to be played Mike what kind of a challenge was this from an operations standpoint keeping the train on the tracks well there's a lot to consider there because if you think about what John Robinson did as the head of all football operations, you're talking about a guy who ran everything, not just from the personnel and the scouting and all the things that you think of, but also the field maintenance, equipment, food, operations. All of those duties had to be divided up. From what I'm told, they felt like all of that went pretty well in terms of everybody taking a piece of the pie and dividing into smaller bites that they could take this week. And, of course, Ryden Cowden taking over in the role of vice president of player personnel. He's running the personnel department right now. That's obviously the main area. Okay. Coach Mack, i got to ask you this. If you're the head coach, what message does this send to you and your staff? The guy who hired you is now gone. Well, the message is you got to win a game this, this Sunday. And that, look, this, the National Football League, Chris, is a, is a train that's on a track that's moving very fast, and it's time sensitive. Regardless of what happens, you still have to get your team ready. As a head coach, the message is we need to win a football game, and let's do these things to try to win a football game. You're not going to be able to control anything else you've got to be able to get your team prepared that's the message all right talking about the team vp of player personnel as you mentioned mike ryan cowden takes over in the interim as the titans try to piecemeal parts of this roster together that's the big thing we'll get to some of the replacements today in a minute but first let's bring in nikki laterulo is down on the field nikki i know many of the players that we talked to this week were drafted by robinson and had good relationships with him but that was not their focus as they prepared for the jags this week was it well, Chris, this team has dealt with a lot of outside noise the past few weeks, whether it was the arrest of their offensive coordinator or the firing of their general manager. But this group hasn't seemed to rattle in the sense of focus. As an outsider, it doesn't look like their record really reflects that. But as someone that's around these guys all the time, they're always focused on winning. They're always focused on what's ahead of them, and they're not worrying about really the noise that's going on around them. Now, head coach Mike Vrabel sent a message to his team this week that says, yes, they all have personal relationships relationships with John Robinson, which makes it okay to feel their feelings about it. But at the end of the day, they all are here and they have a job to do. And that's the message I took from the locker room this week. They all had nothing but good things to say about Robinson and what he's done for all of them and their families, but they need to keep their eyes forward and get a win because it's December and the postseason is right around the corner. Yeah, it definitely adds another layer to the uh, to the week. But uh, as professionals, we have to be able to uh, to get past it. You know, we face all types of adversity throughout the, the, the season and, and different distractions that come up. Uh, as professionals, it's our job to be able to you know put that stuff aside and focus on the task at hand. I don't want to see the guy who drafted me get fired or whatever, but it is what it is. We got to respect that decision. So, um, like I said, I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing the best I can as a leader uh, to just not let it be a distraction. Like when we get to talking about this conversation, that conversation, like, hey, we got the Jaguars this week. Bottom. Line. We got to find a way to get to 85. You know, um, we have to move on. And like I said, our main focus is trying to get a win this weekend. And um, I mean, maybe the emotion for you know other guys like Coach Rave said, maybe emotional a bit. Um, but my job is to help this team get a win this weekend. So you just heard from three leaders on this team, all of them brought to Nashville by John Robinson. They said they reached out to him, and he told all of them, go get the win on Sunday and don't let this become a distraction. They said they've had a good week of practice, so we'll see if that translates onto the game field today. Guys. Yeah, that is definitely the main thing. Thank you very much, Nikki. The focus is on preparing to win this game. That gets a little more challenging given the roster issues that they have today. So with that, let's get to, get to who's in and who's out. 
The Who's In, Who's Out Inactive Report, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers. All right, yeah, some key starters out today. That list includes Danico Autry, Traylon Burks, David Long, Christian Fulton, Ola Daney will also be out today. Add in some names we haven't seen yet this season. Racy McMath makes his debut. John Reed, Terrell Basham, Chris Conley, Josh Thompson at DB, Greg Maben at corner. And then there we see Jags quarterback Trevor Lawrence is a go for today. Mike, let's talk about the receivers that we have right now that we see. So with Burks out, it's Robert Woods, it's Nick Westbrook-Akine, Racy McMath, and Chris Conley. Is it safe to assume that the tight ends are going to get a bigger role today in the offense? I think they will have a big role, but I think they would have had a big role anyway. The Titans feel like Racy McMath can give them some snaps at wide receiver, but really keep an eye on Chris Conley. This is a guy who dropped a pass in the Kansas City game, was later cut because they needed that roster spot. He was brought back and has now been brought back to the active roster since Conley got back he has been outstanding in practice I think you'll see him play a lot at wide out today and the Titans hope that he can add production but to your question Chris yes I do think we'll see a lot of the tight ends anyway Jacob Conquo big yards after the catch good stuff happens when they get him the ball coach Mack to hit his targets, Ryan Tannehill, of course, has got to have time to throw, right? Plenty of talk this week about the offensive line after the beating that it took against Philly. What's the solution to figuring out how to plug leaks in the dam in the short you term? You know what, Chris? The offensive line, I mean, those eight gaps across the front have not changed in 150 years of football. <laughs> You've got to block the people that are in there. That's that's the most important thing. And I think when you dig down and look at it, they've got to, they've got to be together with their techniques, but you've got to consistently win with your man. Uh, the offensive line especially is a series of one-on-one matchups and then brought into the group. So you have to not only win your one-on-one matchups, you have to understand how I'm sitting with Mike Keith side by side. You're next to Mike Keith. We all have to work in conjunction with one another when defenses try to do different things to you. That's what has to happen today. They have to work together, but as a group, they need more push off the line of scrimmage and then give Tannehill some time in the cylinder. A lot of eyes on that offensive line for sure. And if there's one thing we know, guys, It's that Derrick Henry usually has a monster day against Jacksonville, right? The Yuli native has topped 130 yards rushing in four of the last six meetings between these two teams. Mike, is this the day that Henry gets back over the century mark on the ground? Yes. (laughs) I don't think there's any question that Derrick Henry's going to get going today. He's been in a bad mood. He's motivated. He's playing against his hometown team. Yes, I think you're going to see Derrick Henry get going again today. He has just 75 carries over the last four games, so he should be very fresh, very healthy, and I think the Titans feel like if they're going to win this ball game, they've got to be really physical. They've got to hit somebody everywhere, and that's going to start with the offensive line trying to open holes for Derrick. And that's the challenge for the offensive line today, right? Plow that road for 22. It's the challenge for everybody. When a Mike Vrabel team gets in trouble, Chris Harris, what's the one thing they do? Knock the crap out of somebody. (laughs) Whether that's special teams, offense, defense, offensive line, you're running the ball. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to get physical, and that's where they'll start. And I think think that will have an impact on Henry running the ball, that mindset. Okay, Coach Mack, we know that Henry, of course, is capable of busting long runs, right? It'd be nice if he could hit the end zone when the Titans are down in the scoring area. I'm talking about the red zone. The Titans are 0 for 5 in the last two games in the red zone. How do you solve that? Well, look, first of all, they were one or two in the league for a long time. Yeah. So they understand how to do it, but you've got to get it done. And you're correct. 0 for 5 in the last few weeks, that has led to a lot of problems. You're moving the football. You get to the to the red zone in this league, you work really hard. Field position-wise, you work really hard with your defense to get you the ball back. You work really hard on special teams to get you field position. You get in the red zone, especially, Chris, the low red zone. High red zone is a 20-yard line to the 6. That's a different offense. But the low red zone, from the 6-yard line to that goal line you've got to get touchdowns you can't afford to be forced to kick field goals in that area when jacksonville beat baltimore two weeks ago the biggest reason they did it was because baltimore missed opportunities in the red zone they had to kick a lot of short field goals titans cannot do that today they need touchdowns they need to run the points up yeah seven instead of three is always the name of the game that's for sure mike the titans defense is facing trevor lawrence was listed as questionable with a toe injury after taking a hit that could have ended up a lot worse so they dodged a bullet there i'd imagine he'd be somewhat limited physically mobility wise what do you think 
I'm scared to think that <laughs> because he can really, really run. And for a guy 6'6", 220, the thing that Trevor Lawrence combines is that 80s and 90s type quarterback with that tall stand-in-the-pocket guy with the quarterback of today who can really, really run. I hope he doesn't run. He picks his spots a lot better than he used to. I think that's what he'll do today. But you do have to account for Trevor Lawrence's legs, particularly inside the 10-yard line. Okay, Coach Mack, let's talk about defending that then. The pass rush was non-existent against Jalen Hurts last week when they sent four guys. Hurts got the ball out very quickly. How do the Titans scheme up more pressure today against the Jags involved? All right, let's go back to this. If you're getting the ball out quickly, your rush is not going to get there, but you've got to be able to match hands. What you cannot afford to do if you're rushing with four is give a quarterback exit angles up inside or either escape into his throwing hand. You're trying to disrupt timing. You're not going to disrupt timing on quick throws. 2.2 seconds, you're not going to get there in that, but you've got to match hands and get it up, and then your coverage has to tighten up also. And I, I'm talking, it has to be really quick. Quick with your coverage and your and your and your transitions if they're throwing quick. If they extend it in the cylinder, then that's when you need to be able to work your games and, and you have to win one on one. Sooner or later, Chris, when you are rushing four people, it comes down to winning one on ones. We have to do that today. That's what Mike Vrabel talks about all the time. Beat your man in front of you. That's it. Mike, let's talk about the third phase, the special teams. Mike Vrabel, again, specifically mentioned hang time on punts have to be better for coverage than it was last week. They've also had a couple of killer penalties in teams as well. Uncharacteristic stuff for this team. How much focus was on that in practice this a week? A tremendous amount of focus because the return last week, the returner, I should say, Covey from Philadelphia did a nice job, but he is no Jamal Agnew. Sure. The guy that the Titans will see today is one of the preeminent return men in the National Football League. So if you're Randy Bullock, kick it through the end zone. But even more importantly, if you're Ryan Stonehouse, hang time is more important than distance kicking to the side if you're if you're directional kicking kicking to the proper side where your coverage is is a big deal this guy is double dog dangerous and you don't want to give them seven points or extra good field position in this game it has been a major focus of the week and no silly penalties on field goal block oh, attempts I mean, the, the penalties on field goals that's just inexcusable cannot happen today i mean they're not going to play perfect we know that but the pre-snap penalties and the foolish ones are something that you have to eliminate. Penalties that happen during the course of the game, that's one thing. Mike Vrabel forgives those. But the thought penalties or the lack of thought penalties can't have it. All right. We got to take our first break, gentlemen, but still ahead on Titans game day. We check in with Jim Wyatt, who's going to talk more about some of these replacement guys that will be playing key minutes on the field this week. And up next, we go three and out with Coach Mack. He's going to tell us how the Titans can neutralize the Jags' offensive weapons. Stick with us as Titans game day rolls on. Folks inside are fired up. Folks outside are fired up. Noon kick coming. Titans fans are fired up for a win today against the Jags. <laughs> 